moment. Uh, so again, for the League of Independent Theater, um, I'm the uh, communications director, and so I send out all of your e-blasts, so that's who that person is, um, and I will send you out one tomorrow that talks about a bunch of next steps that we are going to invite you to be doing. So um, look forward to that, and you will see that soon. So um, uh, just in order of who I see here, uh, I am going to first invite Ben Kalos to uh, introduce himself and in five words or less, please tell us why you are running for Manhattan Borough President. Manhattan needs affordable art spaces. <laughs> and we know that has been uh, a rallying cry of yours for the last eight years. Uh, we're happy to have you here. Um, next, I would like to invite Mark Levine um, uh, to this space uh, to share why you are running in five words or less for Manhattan Borough President. To imagine a better Manhattan. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, next, I'd like to invite uh, Joanne Simon. Hi. Uh, Brooklyn's workers and women deserve equity. <sighs> Fabulous. Thank you. Yes, running for Brooklyn Borough President. And next, I would like to invite Robert Elstein, who is also running for Brooklyn Borough President. Schools, land use, community, earth, and the arts. Gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us. Now, I know Antonio Reynoso is also here with us, and I just want to give him, uh, if you, uh, give him a moment to come onto camera uh, to join us in this way. And if now isn't the moment, then we know you we will hop on um, uh, in just a moment. So we are, uh, we're getting emails and all sorts of stuff for us to do that. So um, as we uh, go launch into this panel, ooh, I want to remind people of several things. One, um, for our panelists and those listening, we have a strict time limit on the answers. So our technical wizard of the evening will be watching a timer and will mute you if you go over. So please understand and respect that it is in the interest of fairness and time that we mute people. We are deeply grateful that you are present with us sharing your ideas. Um, and then in case anyone is joining us late, a reminder that Lit has already made one endorsement in a borough president race. Council member Jimmy Van Bramer has been a stalwart supporter of the arts and in particular of indie theater. We know that he will continue to be an advocate and our champion as Queensboro president, and we are proud to endorse his candidacy to lead the borough of Queens. So to start off our borough uh, president uh, panel right now, I, uh, we are going to begin with a video question. This is from Sophia Harrison, founder and executive director of Arts, uh, Arts House Schools. Hello and good evening. I am Sophia Harrison, a lifelong Brooklyn resident. And I am also the founder and executive director of Arts House Schools, a not-for-profit organization that provides music, dance, and fine arts services to the children and senior citizens of Coney Island, Brooklyn. My question for the panelists tonight, what does arts and culture mean to you? And how do you plan to protect, serve, preserve, and enhance New York City's arts and culture sector? Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia, for that question. And uh, I'm gonna go and ask each candidate to answer her question directly. You will get 90 seconds to respond. And again, the question is, what does arts and culture mean to you? And how do you plan to protect, serve, preserve, and enhance New York City's arts and culture sector? Uh, Joanne Simon, will you please begin? Well, thank you. Um... Uh, what does it mean to me? Well, it's been a part of my life uh, since I was uh, a young person. Uh, I danced, I acted in school, I've had uh, experience otherwise in theater, but uh, it's also uh, been a part of my community for years. I started a Borm Hill Follies when I was a neighborhood association president. So, um, you know, I think what we need to do is preserve the spaces that we have and we need to work creatively to, to uh, find places that we can uh, encourage the arts to flourish. Um, and I've done that with a number of community-based uh, dance and other arts organizations in, in my area. And I look forward to uh, bringing that more broadly to the rest of Brooklyn. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, next, I would like to invite Ben Kalos to answer the question, 90 seconds. 
arts and culture are what make New York City the center of the world. And it's not just Broadway, it's actually our off-Broadway. It's our public theaters where shows like Hamilton get their first run. It's the Tank, which I've been proud to sponsor with member items since I've been a council member, which offers free performing art space for <coughs> artists and they take a piece of the house uh, where we actually got to see a, a now world-renowned uh, puppet Karl Marx. Uh, and I loved it. Uh, it's supporting all the arts organizations, offering artists a free space, and the fact that tourists will come from all over the world to see our artists, and that's how we can recover. Uh, that's what arts and culture means to me, plus all the amazing art right behind me that my daughter makes. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Robert Elstein to uh, answer this question. 90 seconds. All right. Thanks, Katie. Um, well, I'm an arts teacher. I teach theater at Edward R. Murrow High School. So arts is really at the uh, at the center of uh, what I've devoted myself to. Um, I see the arts as a vehicle for social discourse. It's a means for us to discuss and understand what's happening in our world and what's happened in the past. Um, I think it also has the ability to uplift us from the forces of oppression um, and can be used as a weapon against fascism. Um, I hope to use uh, the arts um, as a means of uh, finding solutions to mental health issues um, through arts therapy. Um, I also just think the arts is probably the best way to uh, build community and connections. You know, when my students are working together on a musical, um, they're working together in ways that they could probably not collaborate in any other context. Um, you know, between all of the designers, the actors, the choreographers, the stage managers, um, the orchestra members, the vocal directors, the music directors. It's, it's an amazing thing to see, you know, a group of teenagers come together over a few months and create something that's truly extraordinary. Um, as a means of protecting um, and serving the community with the arts, I think we need to put most of our funding into public arts because that's what's going to be um, most um, affecting the community. Uh, you know, a lot of our um, arts institutions, whether, you know, for, for one reason or another, they're not really accessed by more than, you know, a few hundred or thousand people. I imagine uh, public concerts and murals that can last for decades that will brighten our lives and inspire generations of Brooklynites. Um, so I think whenever possible, the funding for the arts should be towards programs that will be providing performances and um, experiences uh, for free outdoors. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to welcome uh, Council Member Antonio Reynoso. Thank you so much for joining our panel. I'm not going to put you on the spot right now. I just want to say I see you uh, and acknowledge you happy you're here. Um, and I will come to you in just a moment. Um, next, I would like to turn to uh, Mark Levine to answer the question about arts and culture and its importance. Thank you so much, Katie. You know, it's a treat to be hanging out with some of the Brooklyn Borough President candidates tonight. Great to see you guys. I want to thank uh, Lit and your members for giving me some of the most moving and unforgettable artistic experiences that I've ever had in my life um, that I'll take with me forever. And I think every New Yorker has a story like that. And there's no comeback for the city without art, without the artistic sector, and specifically without independent theater. Uh, for for very clear economic reasons and more importantly because of what you mean to this city. But I think we should be honest about the precarious position that independent theater is in right now. Um, in, in some ways was even pre-pandemic. Uh, but it's going to be extremely difficult to come out of this after a year of no revenue and of not being able to operate. And the city is going to have to do an enormous amount to help this sector come back with direct financial assistance. By changing the rules of the game with landlords through legislation, legislation like the Small Business Job Survival Act, um, through legislation like uh, vacancy tax, so you disincentivize landlords from kicking out theaters, and from finding ways to activate your space off hours, the city could offer revenue for those times. There's a lot that the city must do to help the sector come back strong. As chair of the health committee, I'll be focused on making sure that you can safely and efficiently start serving the public and inspiring us once again.
Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, Antonio Reynoso, uh, first of all, in five, um, five words or less, can you tell us why you are running for uh, Brooklyn Borough President? Greatest borough in New York. <laughs> you hear that, Mark? You hear that, Ben? I just wanted to make sure you heard that. <laughs> Uh, they heard it loud and clear. <laughs> um, and then the this first question from our um, from our friend Sophia Harrison about arts and culture, what it means to you, and how you plan to protect, serve, preserve, and enhance New York City's arts and culture sector. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the question. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. You would think after a year of this, we would have figured it out. So I apologize for being late, but uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, Look, it, it's very clear that New York is very special because of its arts. Um, as a young person, I was actually a professional dancer and did weddings. Yeah, did weddings, salsa competitions, and was very active in arts. Um, and it was uh, something that was very meaningful to me, and it's still meaningful to me. And I know its value. When I was in junior high school, uh, only the students that were achieving uh, top-notch scores were allowed to have a what we call talent back then. Um, and I believe that those students, including myself, were thriving because of the arts program that we had, while the other students were taking on more math, more English. So I just know the impact that it can have on young people and that it has on New York. And I want to make sure that we could we could maintain that. I actually have a plan for uh, on my I'm going to do the best Elizabeth Warren impression I can. I can I actually have a plan. I want to do a not for profit acquisition fund. I want to use the money in the borough president's office to allow for the acquisition of property by non-for-profits so they can stay in their homes long-term. We all know that the number one cost um, is not operations, it's rent um, in, these, uh, in these spaces. Why not use the, the tons of money that we're gonna get? We get to split this money with the five boroughs, 5% 5 of the capital dollars. Why not use that money to allow for non-for-profits to keep their spaces long-term? I'll give an example, Vocal New York, which does great work um, with homelessness and safe, um, safe injection use or supporting um, drug users and really having a different conversation about um, um, safe, uh, safe drug use and just great drug policy was gonna lose their home. And we were able to save it by having them acquire a new space. And I wanna do that for all of Brooklyn and have a very real conversation about ownership being the most important thing. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Thank I am you. now and space is, has been a theme of the night and will continue to be a theme of the night. So it's a perfect transition. Um, I am going to ask each of you a specific direct question to each of you. And so I'm going to start actually with Ben Kalos. Um, ben, when uh, Lit first met you, you went hard on the paint for our hashtag City Spaces initiative, which we are eternally grateful for. Uh, but as you know, this incredible initiative didn't quite go far enough. Spaces were identified and ostensibly made available, but the cost and the administrative barriers kept many of them from actually being utilized. As borough president, how will you make public spaces more accessible? Thank you for your partnership. Uh, when I ran in 2013, uh, Lit took a chance on me as an underdog and we won. Uh, back then we worked on getting, uh, identifying the pops that we could possibly use. Since then I actually wrote a law to get all the pops in for uh, publicly owned, privately owned public spaces available. So that is now law. We introduced the city spaces legislation uh, and we do need everyone on Lit to help get that passed. And ultimately we were able to get the city to start listing a lot of the city properties online, but unlike Fractured Atlas, which is absolutely amazing, they wanted a million dollars in insurance and they wanted thousands of dollars. Uh, literally we have city office buildings, city schools, public housing buildings, all sitting there empty even before the pandemic. As borough president, I will work with LIT to open up and unlock all these spaces so that we can bring arts and culture to public housing a public school and turn every single public school, every single public housing development into a mini theater for each community to bring arts to everyone. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Council Member Antonio Reynoso, uh, this question is for you. Um, in, res in your response to our survey, you talked about the intersectionality of major issues such as uh, environmental justice with the arts. Um, and yes, of course, uh, as this whole night proved, the arts are not superfluous. Artists and their work are an essential part of a healthy community. How would you, as a borough president, 
encourage partnerships between artists and community organizations focused on other essential issues. You have 90 seconds. Um, so uh, I got involved in, uh, I became a city council member mostly to do two things and it was uh, to uh, have police reform uh, in a meaningful way and environmental justice. And I was raised uh, by El Puente, which is a non-for-profit environmental justice arts organization. And they use arts to get their message across. Uh, Brooklyn was actually, or North Brooklyn, my district, handled 40% of the city's trash. And with the work of El Puente and um, what they call you know, uh, pollution crusaders, um, we were able to really affect change in a meaningful way and get the message out there that we need to build equity into how we handle the city's trash. So I understand the value of being able to get a message across the right way by using arts. Every single year, El Puente throws uh, um, a performance uh, during Three Kings Day that speaks to issues that are very important to uh, the community that we represent. Um, and I know how effective it is or has been, again, in being able to get a message out. Um, so if there's work that can be done um, with the independent theaters and just artists in general to get a message out, we want to make sure we can do that. And, you know, I've recently, I was the author of legislation that allowed for outdoor dining. Um, I've been front and center on work that uh, uh, reimagined spaces to get, take it away from private uh, single use vehicles to give it to the people. And we have some thoughts and ideas about how we can use um, art uh, to expand uh, the, the takeover of our streets um, for resources that I think are more valuable and more important than um, single use uh, vehicles and, and art should be central to that. Fantastic, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, my next question is for Robert Elstein. Um, you call for more teaching opportunities for artists, um, especially for increased funding in that uh, capacity, and then as well as for the renovation of commercial properties by the city to allow for shared spaces to be used by arts organizations. Um, a few similar ideas and models have been raised tonight. Could you please tell us what Borough President Elstein's program would look like to get more arts into the schools and getting the artists involved in those programs both paid and given access to the space to create? We have 90 seconds for your response. All right, thank you so much. Um, that's a really great question. And um, I think that um, you know the key for me as Borough President um, is going to be to continue to um, be a teacher, you know, to, to not as a classroom teacher, but to visit every school in Brooklyn. Um, I plan to visit a different school every day on my way to Borough Hall. Um, and um, in, in that time, I will be meeting all of the uh, teachers and, uh, you know, administrators that uh, I'm, you know, would be interested in meeting with me, as well as the students. Um, I think that, you know, it really needs to happen on a one to one level, you know, it needs to be a discussion where there's a person devoted from the borough hall um, office um, that's designated to speak to school administrators and ask them what their specific needs are. Um, what I'm imagining is that artists within New York City's population could um, work one on one with subject uh, teachers in subjects like science and uh, social studies and world languages um, and you know, bring a, something new to the curriculum that's going to give the students not just an artistic experience, but also um, something that's more memorable um, and will actually result in uh, more student progress. So I, I think that it, it will really be through the relationships that I already have, um, but also in reaching out to every school in the borough. Um, and um, I think there was a second part to the question. I don't, I'm not sure if I addressed. Oh, just um, uh, access to space, artists having access to space. Um, right now, you know, uh, I think a lot of the ideas that were proposed this evening were actually really great ideas. But um, yeah, I think that probably what needs to be done is a program that's created that, um, you know, artist, basically artists could apply for a permit to get a space and that the city would be compensating uh, the landlord. So, you know, if, for example, um, a vacant storefront were available, maybe the city would provide them with a voucher for like $1,000 um, for a month, which would be much less than they would typically rent it out for, but it would still provide them um, and the artists with an opportunity during the pandemic. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, I would like to direct a question to uh, Councilmember Mark Levine. 
um, this is specific to your district, the Metro Movie Theater in your current city council district has sat vacant for about 15 years now. And when you were first elected, there was a lot of energy to get a cultural institution in there. Um, the last we could find, it looks like it's finally going to reopen, but it's going to reopen as a retail space. This is far from an isolated instance. Um, as borough president, how will you work to be sure that the spaces aren't sitting vacant, are not sitting vacant, while at the same time, artists can't find space to rehearse or perform? You have 90 seconds, please. Well, thank you, Katie. Look, there, there are actually three space problems for artists. There's the lack of space for performance. There's the lack of space for rehearsal and the lack of space to live in. We have an affordability crisis on all three fronts and the persistence of vacancy is just outrageous at a time of such a severe affordability crisis. The Metro Theater, uh, a jewel of a Art Deco landmark is exhibit A for why we need a vacancy tax in New York City. This is a property that has sat vacant now for 15 years with many, many viable offers from artistic and performance organizations that the landlord simply took a pass on uh, because uh, he wants a uh, million dollars a year in rent. And uh, if we had a vacancy tax, we would have forced this landlord to the table and we would have succeeded in getting one of the many really inspiring vi uh, and viable arts projects into that space. Um, uh, this is actually state legislation, so a borough president can use the bully pulpit to advocate for it. Uh, and I, I have and will continue to do so uh, to get a vacancy tax in place. And just, just a, a word on, on creative ways to use vacant space, um, which I've been proud to support. Uh, two nonprofits, which I'm sure you know well, Chisama and uh, No Longer Vacant, No Longer Empty. Uh, Tashama has is, is done incredible work in my district in some formal industrial buildings uh, in West Harlem uh, and have been active all over Brooklyn as well. Uh, in fact, I went to a great exhibit there in, uh, in the uh, Brooklyn Army Terminal and no longer empty has, has done similar work to bring arts into vacant. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. Sorry for going over. No problem. Um, and uh, now I'd like to direct a question to um, to Assembly Member Joanne Simon. Um, Assembly Member, in your questionnaire response, you called for bringing back a stakeholder task force. And you said you look forward to working with groups like LIT on an arts and culture task force to work together and help promote the arts as we work to recover from COVID. Um, and we're here to say, yes, yeah, sign us up. Um, who better to consult with to solve the problems than those who are directly affected by them? Um, can you please tell us more about what that would look like and how as borough president you would give such task force real teeth to affect positive change you have 90 seconds thank you um i think that uh you know the approach of a task force stakeholder task force for example can be used in a variety of areas uh and this would be one of them and the idea is to bring together people who are representative of, of the stakeholders who have interests in independent theater. So whether it's theater operators, it's actors, it's set designers there. You know, in my, in my district, there are, you know, people working in the arts at all levels and all kinds of jobs in the, in the arts um, and bring them together around the table to talk about what are the issues, what are the barriers, what are the problems they have with access, uh, access in terms of you know, I'm a disability civil rights litigator. So it's, it's disability access, but it's equity. It's bringing uh, this to communities who don't have an opportunity uh, to participate in live theater or who haven't had an opportunity. Um, so it's about making uh, theater and, uh, and the arts more accessible to communities uh, in general. And so how do we do that? Well, the people in those communities are going to know best what their needs are and how you can communicate with them the best so that they will be brought on board. Um, it's the same thing with uh, knowing where those barriers are. People have tried to operate theaters or who have been uh, stymied by the lack of a vacancy tax, for example, or uh, uh, you know spaces that they haven't been able to renovate for years because, for one reason or another. Um, and so bring those people together to talk about those barriers and maybe their policy issues, maybe their issues with regard to, to, to organized labor, for example, and having the rights of their, um, their actors at, at their 
a most important area that, that of their focus. Um, that doesn't need to be, for example, something that isn't uh, uh, consistent with the theater operator's own, uh, own, own is, issues. So if we work together, we can find, in fact, that common thread and we can find a way to, um, to break down whatever those barriers are. And we can also advocate Wonderful, thank you. It was a wonderful answer. Thank you, uh, Joanne. Um, now, uh, to as we wrap up towards the end of our time together, I'm going to ask a question that uh, I will turn over to each one of you to answer, and each one of you will get 45 seconds to offer a an answer. Um, the question is, the borough president position has a lot of soft power and is key in relationship building and priority setting to help the residents of their borough. What partnerships do you have, both within government and outside of it, that you will call upon directly, sorry, that you will call upon to directly support the individual working artists in your borough if elected? So again, what partnerships do you have, both within government and outside of it, that you will call upon to directly support the individual working artists in your borough if elected. Uh, 45 seconds and Mark Levine will start with you. Well, thank you so much. This has been an incredible forum already. Uh, time has flown fast. I think that the vast array of endorsements behind my candidacy indicate the depth of my partnerships. Endorsements from city elected officials, state elected officials at the federal level, uh, among a vast array of, of labor unions and community activists and democratic clubs. This is a network that I will mobilize on behalf of the arts, uh, on behalf of independent theater, and focused on the challenge of affordable space, affordable performance space, affordable rehearsal space, and affordable space for artists to live in. It's gonna require a citywide mobilization at every level of government, and I'm all in on this fight and would be truly honored to have your support as the next Manhattan Borough President. Wonderful, thank you, thank you. Um, Julianne Simon, I'd like to go to you next, please. 45 seconds. Sorry, unmuting. So thank you very much, and thank you to everybody who's watching this forum. Uh, you know, I have a deep uh, roots in Brooklyn. I've been living here for 40 years. I have uh, you know, community-based organizations that I've worked with for years that support me. I have elected officials that are supporting me. And when I launched my campaign, I did it with just folks. I did it with people who have deep roots in community, uh, in schools, in community-based organizations. And in fact, uh, one of the efforts I've had uh, as an assembly member is to support renovating the, the uh, auditorium spaces in our schools to make them more usable uh, for theater for our, our kids. So um, I will bring all of those uh, forces to bear uh, to bring uh, the arts to uh, Brooklyn uh, and to expand and, and improve the access to the arts in Brooklyn. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, Antonio Reynosos, I would like to turn to you next for 45 seconds of what partnerships you will uh, bring into your uh, term as borough president. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much again for having me as well. And I just want to say, you know, as a as the only person of color on this panel, just really want to speak to the fact that um, uh, people that look like me don't necessarily uh, are not necessarily the people that are in the front lines of getting resources to be able to do work and art. And I want to be able to use um, the bully pulpit and my background to be able to move, uh, bring forward access um, and assistance to, to theater. Um, but look, we have three charter mandated responsibilities and one of them is community boards. And we should be adding a lot of theater folks into these community boards. And that is something that I'm gonna make sure you have access to. And Cynthia Nixon has endorsed me. I don't know how I can use that as leverage or to, to build up a little, uh, um, some support. So hopefully I can, I can use that partnership uh, to, to make something happen. So thank you again for having me. Fantastic, thank you so much. Uh, ben Kalos, I'd like to turn to you next, please. 45 seconds. Never taken money from real estate developers, corporations, or lobbyists. And that means that on, I ask them for things. I don't have my hand in their pocket like other folks do. And so um, when I see an empty storefront or a theater, we've actually been able to reopen them. We've been able to fund to Shama. We've been able to reach out to organizations like the Tank. We've been able to have partnerships with CASA at public schools and senior centers. Um, I'll use my partnerships with NYCHA centers, public schools, even private performing spaces to make spaces for artists to have spaces that they can perform affordably. 
I live and breathe arts, especially with the young toddler. We take ballet breaks, astronaut breaks, you name it. It's part of why I have the endorsement of Congress member Carol Maloney, 78 labor unions. And we've been able to fill these empty storefronts, reopen the theaters, and I'm hoping to count on Lit's support once again to be your next borough president. So we can bring the arts everywhere. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and to Robert Elstein uh, for kind of the, the last uh, answer on this question of what partnerships you will bring to your tenure as borough president. 45 seconds. Oh, but you're muted still. Okay, thanks, Katie. Um, well, I created um, an organization called ABC, the Artists of Brooklyn Coalition, um, and we've been meeting remotely. And the objective was really to um, you know, build these relationships and to find out what the artists needed through the pandemic. So um, I've worked with a lot of organizations and individuals uh, like Puppetsburg, uh, Julie Reed and uh, Carolyn Grogan, um, Richard Crawford, um, Emily Cordes. Um, I've also worked a lot with uh, Jeff Beeler and uh, Roy Nathanson um, and Aaron Listman of Project Gig, who are doing all of these amazing porch concerts in Flatbush. Um, Roy Nathanson did actually, I think, 80 nights in a row, a concert from his porch. And uh, Aaron Listman's doing a, a concert next weekend with Project Gig from his porch. So um, I'm working with the artists who are not only creating in Brooklyn, but also leading the organizations. Um, one of my colleagues at Edward Murrow High School is Roberta Raymond, who's the director of the Ryan Theater. Uh, I think our community theaters needs to be recognized. Um, a lot of them are really providing great um, work in terms of just an experience for members of the community, but also uh, incredible art. Um, I also have a relationship with uh, assembly member, Bobby Carroll, who um, is uh, one of the lead uh, in the state uh, in terms of theater um, and um, Peter Avery, New York City Department of Education, um, director of theater education. So I, I've, I've been doing this 16 years and it Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to all five of you for joining us today. This is all the time we have uh, for this panel, but it was such a deep pleasure to hear from you. Really inspiring and really just exciting and wonderful. So thank you all so, so much. Um, I am now going to just, uh, before I turn it over to Mariko the Clown, I am just going to share with our lit members a quick uh, a quick plug for what we do um, before we go um, I'm one of the hosts of our lit call parties so they're a place to join your fellow lit members on zoom as we call our elected officials to advocate for policies that are important to us so several of the people on this call um, and throughout the evening have uh, received calls from our uh, call party where we advocate for um, for policies that <clears throat> you are hearing tonight and uh, things that help our community. Um, so I personally do not love the telephone, but um, Lit creates the call scripts for you. We have a great supportive atmosphere to be making the calls and the calls really do make a difference. So we try to host these call parties bi-weekly and our next one is this Thursday in two days on March 25th at two o'clock. Uh, we'll be calling state representatives about the budget negotiations in Albany, including the New York Health Act, which currently has a majority support in both houses. So um, to join us, we're going to drop a link in the chat so you can sign up. Uh, thank you all so much. And as